All right, guys, got a quick little uh, in-service on the um, monitor. So our uh, biphasic, right? So the ones we're all used to, biphasic. We know it's biphasic um, because it says biphasic. Um, the heart start uh, Phillips monitors. So big thing is, is you're going to hook up your patient. You throw those, um, those R2 pads or the defibrillation pads. That's what they're called as R2 pads on the patient. And you're like, boom, I ain't got no rhythm. I ain't got no rhythm. Remember, you gotta hit your lead select up here and cycle through to pads. Bam. Then you should have a rhythm, okay? Um, because it's gonna, the pads will actually uh, identify the rhythm, so you'll be able to get the rhythm from the pads. So you don't actually have to have the leads on the patient. Um, now, if you do put the leads on the patient and you don't have the pads on the patient, then you're gonna have to pick the leads. So, I'm going to get to it real quick. Boom. So, we pick our leads. Figure out which one will work here. And boom. We're good to go. So, I got this hooked up to a fake patient. Um, another thing that we talked about um, the other day, and a few people had questions on, was you got that patient that's bradycardic. Right? How do I, if the doctor tells me to, how do I transcutaneously pace that patient? So this is that patient's bradycardic, we call that rat call, um, or they're in the ICU um, and we're going to transcutaneously pace them. We gave them some atropine, still didn't come up, and they're symptomatic, right? So symptomatic bradycardia is why we're going to transcutaneously pace. If somebody's heart rate's 40, their blood pressure's like 120, and they're like, I feel fine, we leave that person alone. But that person whose heart rate's like 20 to 30, even 40, and they're symptomatic, that tells us that their brain is not getting enough blood flow. So we need to pace them um, if our medication measures fail. So we gave them the uh, 0.5 of atropine, because remember 0.5 while alive, so that's half an amp of atropine, um, half an ampule. We're giving them 0.5 milligrams, um, and they didn't come up, we're gonna need to pace them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit pacer, now it's gonna come up pacer stopped, which means it's not pacing. You guys don't see pacer spikes on this monitor right now. Um, next thing what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to this start stop and boom, you're gonna hit start. And what you're gonna start seeing is pacer spikes. Now, granted I got a fake patient here so you're not gonna actually pace them, but these are the pacer spikes. And what you should be seeing after each pacer spike is a QRS. So if you have a pacer spike with no QRS, what you're doing is you have failure to capture. So you need to up the juice. So you're gonna come over here to output, you're gonna crank it up. So you start off just by, first is like 10, until you get capture. So you crank it up by 10, MA, 10 MAs, which is milliamps, and you have capture, you're good to go. But now the doctor says, hey, I want you, uh, can we up their rate? Cause I want their heart rate to be 90. You're gonna come over here to rate, you're gonna crank that up. To 90 okay so now we're not going to capture because of course this is a fake patient um so that's the two ways that you're gonna pace somebody now i'm gonna stop this for a second and i'm gonna show you this there are two modes that you can do with this pacer you can do demand mode and you can do fixed mode Catherine. hello um Fixed mode is just gonna pace regardless of what's going on. It's not gonna care what the patient's um, underlying rhythm is, it's just going to town. Demand mode is gonna say, if this patient's flipping in and out of some sort of bradycardic rhythm and some sort of rhythm that's above what we're pacing at, so like we're at 70 right now, so let's say they flip back into a normal size of rhythm at 80, it's gonna say, I see that they're, they're actually there, I'm not gonna pace. Um, the Probably the best thing to do is to keep them in the demand mode because um, if you accidentally start pacing on top of their QRSs, you could throw them into some sort of ventricular dysrhythmia. Um, you don't need to sync. When you actually turn the pacer on, it's going to sync. So when I turn the pacer off, the sync goes away. You can tell by because there's no little dots on there. the QRSs now. I turn it back on and boom, there it is. Now, one thing I've been asking people, um, the tripping them up is like, okay, if I'm going to pace this and I'm seeing QRSs, what if I want to atrially pace? Through this can I actually pace through this no you cannot you are just sending shocks through the body all you're gonna do is get capture of the QRS um, so that's ventricular capture and really in this situation that's all we really care about because remember 
we really want the ventricles to be doing something because if the atrium are, are contracting and the ventricles are not, you have a dead patient. If the atrium are not doing anything but the ventricles are contracting, you have an alive patient. So that's the key. And this is going to be short term until we get some sort of um, more definitive um, uh, pacer in place. And now nine times out of ten, this is not going to cath lab and putting in a implanted pacemaker. That is not the case. Most of the time when this stuff happens, this patient took too much meds, got too much meds, had some sort of issue which maybe if we can fix the underlying cause, we wouldn't need the implanted pacer. So we like this is patient's probably gonna go to cath lab, get that transvenous pacer, or we're gonna put that transvenous pacer at bedside. Um, and they're gonna be on that transvenous pacer for a couple of days until we see if this resolves. Stop whatever medication's causing it, try to fix the underlying problem, get that heart cath, maybe this is a, uh, a blockage problem. You know, what could it be? Um, other things I wanna talk about, so we're gonna turn this bad boy off. Boop. So if I wanna defibrillate somebody, Okay, so I'm gonna crank this guy up. I'm gonna charge. I'm going up to whatever I charge to. So now I only charge to three joules, so three joules. And big thing is, is the disarm is just gonna disarm. It means I did not shock him. I don't wanna shock him. I accidentally did that. I don't wanna do that. If I charge, get to what I want and hit the shock button, it's gonna actually shock the patient. So in the moment, when everybody's all hyped up, we always forget about that. So big thing is, is if you're in the moment, you've got a patient that goes into B-fib, you're going to crank this thing up to 150. Remember, this is white for a reason, because these biphasics and the American Heart Association with ACLS recommends 150 on a biphasic monitor. You charge it, you wait for it to alarm alarm, and we're going to just make it alarm alarm here and we're gonna tell everybody to clear. So I'm not looking at the monitor, I'm looking at the patient, I'm making sure nobody's touching that patient, and then I shock them, okay? And remember, after we shock, unless that patient wakes up and says, hey, what's going on? You're gonna start back in on CPR, okay? Even if you start back in on CPR, if that patient starts fighting you, then you can talk about stopping CPR to see what's going on. But if they are not doing anything, we continue with CPR. Um, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments down below. Um, I'll see you guys again real soon.